everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hey, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. And welcome to episode 56 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just some cool stuff that we do. And uh, we have our returning guest. You might remember him from our Meat Driven Telemetry special episode for DevNet Create. Uh, Quinn Snyder is going to join us today and talk to us about something called Atlantis. But before we get started, Quinn, would you mind introducing yourself again for those new to DevNet Snack Minute? Yeah, I feel, uh, I mean, this is what, my third time. I think at some point I will be uh, obtaining distinguished snacker uh, status. But uh, for those of you who have had the pleasure of, of uh, watching a Snack Minute with me in it, my name is Quinn Snyder. I'm a developer advocate with uh, Cisco's DevNet and Dev uh, Relations Organization. We're going to have to get those jackets like they have on Saturday Night Live when they, uh, when they come on five times, when they host five times, like uh, Steve Martin and... Uh, who else? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, but I digress. So, Quinn, um, uh, I know we're talking about Atlantis. Can you can you give us um, an overview of what it is, kind of how it fits into uh, uh, ACI and in, in Cisco architecture? Yeah. So for the past little bit, I've been really exploring a lot of, of GitOps, and that's a, a broad term for building things and having things automated using a, a traditional Git workflow. So when we think of that, that's our, our source code manager. We're having to do pull requests. We're using uh, CI CD pipelines to kind of automate the infrastructure deployment or even application deployment if, if, if the shoe fits. Um, but what I've been exploring a little bit is, is that in the network automation space, sometimes CI CD pipelines can become a little fragile. We're dependent on, on building these CI files in YAML, we're doing bash scripts, we're having to move a lot of files back and forth. And so that kind of led me down on a journey to how do we only incorporate kind of the, the CD portion? We we have this tooling using infrastructure as code principles that we can leverage to build kind of these stateless configurations that will be applied towards some infrastructure. We have some feedback back, we can log that. But how do we really just incorporate the CD portion of the repo? We don't need to do all that integration piece and write that complex YAML, which really led me to Atlantis, which is actually infrastructure automation using GitOps workflows. But on, underneath the covers, it's using Terraform. So we, we connect Terraform using this Atlantis server package. Uh, we build our, our standard configurations that we would do normally in Terraform uh, using the, the traditional HCL files that define our, our resources and, and data sources. And then when we commit them and, and run a, P, a pull request against a, a branch inside of our repo, Atlantis will do all that heavy lifting. It'll archive and show all the, the neat things that's, that's going to create using the Terraform plan. We can do comments and, and, and then finally have Atlantis apply that configuration towards the end device. But it's all archived in that PR. So even after that PR is closed and all the code's been merged into our, our main branch, we still have a record of everything that's being archived. So it's really a way to simplify that whole deployment process uh, using infrastructure's code, but doing so in a way that we don't have to worry about building all those fragile pipelines ourselves. I, um, this, I misspoke earlier. I said ACI, but what I'm realizing is that basically we could probably use Atlantis with anything that has a Terraform provider, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And so we, because we're defining the the provider at the top part of our our main Terraform file, we can use anything that supports Terraform. It's just I'm using again against ACI A because we have a provider, B because I think ACI is cool, and C it's it's a way to to really show the power of infrastructure automation more so than we have this nebul nebulous construct in the cloud where we're creating VPCs and ELBs. People, are, the network engineers can understand at least at a, at a fundamental concept what ACI is and showing the power of that automation um, using Atlantis is, is something that's very tangible for them to hold on to. Quinn, I'm sold. I, I want to see this. I don't think, I mean, I think this is pretty awesome. Just handling that CD portion of uh, your CI CD uh, with Atlantis is, is pretty cool. I've seen a portion of it, but I'm excited to share this with our snacker. So let's let's get the demo rolling. Yeah, so right now, pretty pretty simple. My screen right now, this is just showing that I am, in fact, connected to a DevNet sandbox. Uh, so I'm using this on my local machine. There are instructions where you can have this uh, you know, reaching on any system. The key part is whatever machine that you're connected to or using has reachability into the infrastructure that it's, it's going to be configuring. So in this case, I'm using a public GitHub account, my public GitHub account. I'm connected to a DevNet sandbox on my machine, and I've got some, some you know, interconnectivity. So I have reachability to both the sandbox box and uh, the internet from my machine. The second piece of it is that Atlantis uses webhooks. So we connect 
the GitHub repository or Bitbucket or or GitLab or whatever you're using, you connect that to your uh, deployment machine using webhooks. So this is just showing that I have a webhook set up. I'm listening on port 4141 on my local host out uh, to the public internet, and I've connected that. Uh, this URL is part of my webhook address inside of my repository, and I'll show that in a second. The third part of this is just starting the Atlantis server. So I have some, some things that are, are defined as, as environment variables. The URL is the, the ngrok address that I have, the user uh, that I have inside of my GitHub, a secret token. So instead of using a password, we create those one-time app tokens inside of GitHub, but whatever the, the source code repository that you use there. And then finally, the webhook secret and the repo that we're, we're firing those webhooks from. So once we go ahead and start uh, the Atlantis server, We'll see that it'll initialize there. Perfect. So we can finally see we're, we're listening on port 4141 and everything is good to go. Um, with this, I have a, in, in VS Code, I have a branch uh, set up inside of this uh, Snack Minute GitOps uh, repo. Inside of the main repository, all I have is a readme. So there's no branches here. We just have the main, and it, all it contains is a readme. So there's nothing up my sleeve here, even though I am wearing the long sleeves. You know, throw back to Rocky and Bullwinkle there. <laughs> nothing up my sleeve here. Everything is uncommitted. So what I'm going to do here is just walk through. We have a, a standard ACI Terraform configuration. So I'm referencing the username, password, and URL for the ACI uh, tenant or the ACI uh, controller. Defining a tenant, defining um, a VRF defining a bridge domain and a subnet. So some basic network constructs inside of this um, inside of this tenant. I also have a variable file that's defining the login information, the VRF, bridge domain, uh, and subnet, et cetera. So everything there is, is uncommitted uh, inside of the Snack Minute branch. So what I'm going to do real quickly here is go through and uh, we will go ahead and commit. Let me scroll through here to make sure I don't mess up here. Uh, we're just going to add everything inside of this file. We're going to commit it and then push it to the Snack Minute branch inside of my repository. So everything has been created. We'll scroll over. It's now been committed into the Snack Minute branch inside of my um, my GitHub repository. So let's do a pull request. I get nervous when things run that they might not run, but you've you're you're doing well so far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm hoping that nothing breaks, but if it breaks, we have a valuable learning opportunity to see how Atlantis does error handling as well. <laughs> Always looking on the positive okay. side. Oh, I'm I'm a I'm a very sunny individual. Um, so what it, we've we've created this this uh, initial um, pull request. You see, and when it started, there was nothing that was showing up, but now what's happening is Atlantis is running this plan. So what happened is Atlantis. If we scroll back, I hate to jump screens, but Atlantis received those webhooks from GitHub. And so it's executing all of these individual files. So it's doing a pull. Uh, we're going to see here, we're going to make sure that we've acquired a lock with that. We're going to run uh, the plan, which kind of scrolls down here. And then we show that it was using workspaces and things like that. So it's actually going through a traditional Terraform workflow just via webhooks and communicating back and forth with GitHub. So after that has run, we, we now see that Atlantis has commented inside of my pull request. And if I go to the show output here, we can see that all of the traditional commands that would be run if I was to do a Terraform init and Terraform plan inside of that directory are now part of my GitHub PR. So we can see all of the resources that are going to be created, the order in which they're going to be created, as part of the, the circular dependency graph inside of Terraform. And so we, we have all of this archived as part of the, this pull request. It's done all of the heavy lifting for us. So now anybody who's part of this repository can come in, view the results of the Terraform plan. Is this going to break any infrastructure? Do we need to make any modifications, changes? The, the beautiful thing about this is if I was to, to go in and change that main.tf file inside of, of my, my repository and do another commit, uh, Atlantis will rerun that plan. So if there's something that needs to be changed or added, we can see the incremental steps. Hey, we need to change the subnet IP, or maybe we need to change the name of the VRF. Those will be reflected in subsequent messages inside of that PR. But if everything is, is good to go here, we can see that we're going to create four resources. Uh, nothing's changing and nothing is being destroyed. Just to make sure that everything is good, we don't have any tenants inside of our ACI fabric. So nothing has been pre-created. 
if I go ahead and do this Atlanta supply as a part of my comment inside of my uh, GitHub PR, Atlantis <laughs> plot. Cross your fingers. That it is works. so clever. So now we're applying the, the plan that's been in there. We're going to comment this. And it's going to, to hold off a second. We're going to wait for those webhooks to move back and forth uh, between um, my local machine. We're going to see that we have Atlantis pending the apply in progress. And here is the output for running that uh, configuration application. That is awesome. <laughs> That's so So now cool. Atlantis has <laughs> created all of those resources for me. And if we go into the APIC, we can see that Atlantis testing tenant has been created and those simple networking constructs that I have um, uh, generated. So for networking, if we look at VRS, we can see that, that VRF exists inside that VRF uh, cloud patients here. Um, I'm sorry, bridge domains here. We can see that that bridge domain has been created and that subnet that's referenced as part of our variables file has also been created. So this is a way, now that I've got all of that tracked inside of the PR, it's been applied as, as part of that configuration. And now we have documentation for any PR that, that occurs. It's it, it, We didn't have to jump between uh, command line launching. We didn't have to go into the GUI. Everything occurred within the Git operation, which if we're working in our CD, CI CD pipeline is the one spot that we have to worry about anyway. This is amazing. Ha! Not I'm to mention I can, I can revert, right? If I make a mistake where I create some tenants that I, they're not intended to be there, I can just simply revert back and it would delete it. Yeah, you, we, can, we can delete that. The other beautiful part about this is, is if, we're, if we're talking about a traditional CI CD pipeline, uh, we have to handle a lot of that, that uh, icky stuff, I should say. So, so if we're using Terraform, we uh, want to be able to make sure that anybody, if we've got multiple people working inside this repo, that only one person has access to committing those resources to the end, um, end device at any one time. So things like Terraform Cloud solve that with concurrency and locking and things like that. But we would have to natively build that into our CI CD pipeline. Right now, even though I have all of this uh, configuration applied inside of the pipeline, I haven't closed this PR. So right now, Atlantis has locked this repository from anyone else making any changes to the configuration on the end device until I close that PR. So this makes sure that I have a very consistent methodology and I only have one person making changes on the infrastructure at any one time. So I don't have to worry about any of those concurrency problems, any of those locking problems. Atlantis is handling this for me automatically. Can you imagine like having a multi-tenant of, of ACI running and you want to kind of push all these creations simultaneously and then actually track them to see which ones have created or not um, with with Terraform and the ability to, like it's just just the use case around as I think about it is just it's mind blowing to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I was I was taken aback when I first started playing with it just because it. Uh, really, like it was that simple. I mean, I, I we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll walk through some of the other steps behind this, but I just want to show this real quick. So the the PR hasn't been closed yet. So so Atlantis is still locked. This I've I've going to commit this applied successfully. I'll close it with a comment, and once it's been closed, oh, so this is unmerged commit. So I never actually didn't merge that into. So I've closed the the to reopen this pull request real quick, and let me go ahead and merge it real quick. Because I didn't merge the branch, I just closed it. What you'll see here in the logs is that we did not unlock this. Yeah, so right here, that we did not unlock this until I merged that PR. So Atlantis uh, okay. had locked the system. Even though I closed it, I never merged it. So until it's merged, we don't remove those locks. So it's it's making sure that we only have one open PR uh, that has been unmerged at any one point in time. So now that we have all that done, we've deleted the locks in the workspace, everything is back to normal, and we can see that inside of the repository, we can go back here and go to the main code. We can see that the main branch, we have the variable and the, the main file there. And, and really going back to that, that ease of setup that I was talking about earlier, the only thing that I really had to do aside from ensuring that I had that application token with repository permissions inside of my repository or inside of my uh, overall GitHub uh, account was setting up webhooks. So all I've done is I've set up a webhook pointing to my NGROC address. Hmm. Uh, it's sending JSON payload. 
And these four checkboxes, issue, uh, issue comments, pull request reviews, pull mm -hmm. requests, and pushes. So it's really as simple as setting up a webhook uh, between your server and and your your source code manager of choice, whatever the Git running the running the server, and we have this full CD pipeline built automatically for us using Terraform. There's nothing complex about it. Point click, few tokens, export some environment variables, and run the server, and you're you've you've got deployment. Uh, well, Quinn, um, this is amazing. Um, I, I can't wait to get my hands on this and, and start working with it. I think that's fantastic. Thank you for showing us this for real. Um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week. Um, congratulations on your third episode. I think you're, you're in the running with a couple other people for, for third time uh, guest, but uh, thank you again for, for joining us and showing us this awesome, um, this awesome utility. Uh, DevNet Snackers, uh, we'll see you guys next time on the next episode of DevNet Snack Minute. Thanks, Snackers, and thank you, Quinn.